the beautiful Indonesian island of Flores, the name derived from the Portuguese for flowers. It holds a secret to a civilization nobody knew existed until 15 years ago. It was in this remote limestone cave located in the small town of Ruteng, just outside of Flores' main tourist spot, strange fossils were found. On September 6, 2003, during a routine dig in the Liangbua cave, Indonesian archaeologists uncovered the skeleton of an adult female, measuring only about a meter in height. They named her Flo, short for Homo floresiensis, but she later acquired the nickname The Hobbit, inspired by J.R.R. Tolkien's fictional character and given due to the fossil's small shape and size. Wahyu Saptomo was one of the archaeologists who made the startling discovery. Manusianya kecil gitu loh, tapi kita yakin bahwa apapun itu pasti sangat penting. Akhirnya kita berupaya untuk mengangkat temuan itu dari dasar gua yang kita temukan dalam lima, eh, hampir enam meter kedalamannya, kita bawa ke hotel, kita persiapkan dengan sangat baik, akhirnya kita bisa sedikit demi sedikit mengetahui secara utuh temuan itu, dan kemudian kita melakukan Perbandingan dengan yang lain-lain ternyata ini cukup menarik karena dilihat dari ukuran kepalanya yang sangat kecil, sangat berbeda dengan kita dan kita juga belum tahu waktu itu ukurannya volume otaknya berapa tapi begitu sampai di Jakarta kita ukur ketemu sekitar 380 derajat, 380 cc. For hundreds of thousands of years, archaeologists believed that Flores could not have been inhabited by humans because the island was so isolated. Flores was divided by what scientists called the Wallace Line, founded by naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace in 1859. It's essentially an imaginary boundary that was drawn between Australia and the Asian islands. At one point, species were free to move around in both continents until tectonic plates began to move these lands apart, covering it in large amounts of treacherous water. That eventually ended up in driving evolution of human species in different directions, far away from Flores. It is known that our species Homo sapiens flourished in Africa, and it wasn't until much later that our ancestors began to move across the globe. Homo floresiensis, on the other hand, might not have been able to make that journey from Africa all the way to Indonesia. Its fossils showed that it was too frail to have traveled that distance, or even swam to the deep waters that surrounded Flores back then. To this day, the finding still baffles archaeologists. Thomas Sutikna was with Wahyu on that eventful day in September 2003. He recalls how extremely fragile those fossils were, and transporting them back to Jakarta was a complicated process. It took them days by land and sea to get the parts from Liangbua to where it is today, the National Archaeological Center in Jakarta. Yang buah secara umum merupakan salah satu situs arkeologi di Indonesia yang memberikan informasi banyak tentang kehidupan manusia di masa lalu dan bahkan yang buah merupakan satu-satunya situs arkeologi di Indonesia dan mungkin di Asia yang memiliki minimal dua spesies manusia yang berbeda yaitu satu Homo sapiensis manusia purba dan juga manusia modern atau Homo sapiens seperti kita ini. Beberapa dekade, beberapa uh, puluh tahun yang lalu, tidak ada satupun orang yang percaya bahwa manusia purba sudah bisa uh, uh, bermigrasi ke Indonesia Timur. Tapi dengan penemuan di Liangbua ini, kita memberikan suatu bukti. 
Those animal fossils were of the now extinct elephant species known as Stegodon and the five-foot giant bird, the marabou stork. It also turns out that Komodo dragons had set foot on this part of the island, which is completely unheard of today, as they can only be found on the western tip of Flores. Sebenarnya liang buah sudah diteliti cukup lama ya, sejak tahun 65 itu oleh oleh Pater Verhoeven, cuma hanya menggali sampai sekitar satu meter ke dalam dan menemukan beberapa rangka manusia, ada tujuh kalau nggak salah, tapi itu berasal dari level yang bagian atas sekitar 2000 tahun yang lalu. Kemudian dari kantor Pusat Penelitian Arkeologi Nasional di bawah kepemimpinan Profesor Suyono melanjutkan penelitian di sini 78 sampai 89 dan juga menemukan eh, apa namanya eh, kubur manusia zaman dulu sekitar tujuh rangka tapi itu juga sama di level neolitik sekitar 2000 2500 tahun yang lalu. The original excavations were conducted between 2001 to 2004 and mainly focused on four regions of the cave. During that time, other fossils were also found along with pieces of charcoal in the sediments. The charcoal bits were discovered to be around 19,000 to 13,000 years old. When Homo floresiensis was first studied, the fossils was estimated to be about 18,000 years old. It wasn't until further exploration that they found Liangbua was home to inhabitants even more ancient than that. Each and every layer that's being dug up here tells a story that dates back from 3,000 to 68,000 years ago. The discovery of Homo floresiensis changed the history of civilization as we knew it. Did Homo floresiensis interact with our species Homo sapiens at all? And what drove them to extinction? Those are some of the questions scientists are still working to answer. Since the discovery, reputable scientists and archaeologists from around the globe have joined the local team. One of those is Matthew Tocheri, who joined the excavation team in Liangbua in 2008. The discovery was uh, uh, in incredible uh, when, it was, uh, when it was announced. Uh, the main reason why is because right now we're the only humans left. Our species uh, is the only species that still survives. But we know from the fossil record that in the past there were many species of humans. Um, and so, but most of them went extinct long before our species even, even evolved. Um, but Homo frisiensis actually survived uh, on this planet at the same time that our species uh, was basically starting to move across the globe. Uh, and that's partly why it's so significant. When we study, uh, when we study and learn about Homo frisiensis, we also learn about ourselves and what happened uh, in the past that made us a little bit different. At first, the discovery sparked a debate about whether Homo floresiensis was an entirely separate species or a dwarfed modern human. But that debate was eventually put to rest as more significant findings started to surface. But whether Homo floresiensis survived long enough to interact with modern humans remains an unanswered question. Since the famous fossils have been excavated, Flores has been generating headlines, much more than before. Tour operators have recorded a staggering 1,000% increase in tourism since the finding was announced. Now, Liangbua serves as an unofficial tourist destination. Although the boom in tourism largely benefits the locals, the government is still prioritizing archaeological work within the cave. Ketika Liangbua ditetapkan menjadi salah satu dari 10 cagar budaya nasional, perhatian dari pemerintah juga kemudian meningkat, ya, baik dari pemerintah kabupaten, provinsi maupun pusat. Kami sedang berproses menata uh, sarana air minum, kemudian uh, toilet dan sebagainya kita siapkan. Pemerintah provinsi karena ini menjadi museum adalah kewenangan pemerintah provinsi, itu juga sudah dalam agenda untuk diperbaiki, diperbaiki. 
Lalu saya sedang berjuang ketika nanti surat keputusan Menteri Pendidikan dan Kebudayaan RI karena beliau buah ini kita pegang, kita akan mendapat dukungan pendanaan. Indonesia's contribution to the ancient human story began in 1891 when fossils were discovered in Java, which became known as Homo erectus. This recent discovery has brought about a new understanding of the relationship between modern humans and Homo floresiensis. The island of Flores has not only become an important archaeological site, but a place of birth for the new branch on the tree of human evolution. For Assignment Asia, I'm Silkina Alawalia in Flores, Indonesia.